From watching a match at Wimbledon, to supporting your favourite football team in the Football World Cup, to taking a tour of the Barcelona Olympic City, to going on a yoga retreat. Sports tourism comes in many different shapes and sizes. Sports tourism is big business. We all know that sports tourism is tourism that involves sports. That's pretty obvious. But actually, this is a multi-million dollar industry. And there is more to it than meets the eye. So in this video, I'm going to tell you all about the sports tourism industry, why it's so big, and what the good and bad things are about it. If you are new to my channel, my name is Dr. Hayley Stainton, and I'm here to educate you more about the tourism industry and how we can all be better tourists and better tourism industry stakeholders. So what is sports tourism? Sports tourism is the act of traveling from one locality to another with the intention of being in some way involved with a sporting activity or event. Many people believe that sports tourism relates only to watching a sports event, but this is not correct. The sports industry is so much more than this. Sports tourism encompasses traveling for your own sporting purposes, such as a yoga teacher training course, a badminton competition, or learning to surf. Sports tourism includes attending sporting events, such as a Formula One race or a premiership football match. Sports tourism includes nostalgic visits to places of historical importance, such as the Olympic Stadium in Barcelona, or to see memorabilia related to your favorite sporting hero. There are, in fact, four main types of sports tourism. These are sport event tourism, active sport tourism, nostalgia sport tourism, and passive sports tourism. While sports tourism has not always been extremely popular, during recent decades, the amount of people attending out of area sporting events has drastically increased. People are now traveling far and wide just to attend their favorite events. Today, sport is regarded as the world's largest social phenomenon and tourism is predicted to become the world's biggest industry early in the next century. So, it doesn't take a genius to work out that sports tourism is pretty big business. The sports tourism industry has grown considerably in recent years. The sports tourism industry is estimated to be worth approximately 5.72 trillion US dollars. And the sports tourism industry makes up a significant part of the overall tourism industry. Some people claim that this figure is as high as 25%, meaning that a quarter of all tourism is related to sports. The importance of sport tourism is further emphasized by the statements from the World Tourism Organization and the International Olympic Committee, which in 2004 announced their commitment to reinforce their partnerships on collaboration in the sports and tourism domain. They stated that tourism and sport are interrelated and complementary. Both are powerful forces for development, stimulating investment in infrastructure projects, such as airports, roads, stadiums, sporting complexes and restaurant projects that can be enjoyed by the local population as well as tourists who come to use them. This demonstrates that sports tourism has a wider economic and social impact than simply the sporting occasion itself. It provides social and economic opportunities for the local population as well as the visitors to the area. So let's talk a little bit more about these different types of tourism and what they actually look like on the ground. Sports event tourism is tourism which centers around a sporting event. Sporting events can be of any size and importance. However, it tends to be the major sporting events which gain the most gravitas. Hallmark events, such as the Olympics or the Football World Cup, are important centers for sport event tourism, bringing in millions of tourists to the destination. Smaller events, such as the Henley Regatta in the United Kingdom, or a national tennis competition, also clarify as sport event tourism. And an often overlooked example of sport event tourism are amateur sporting events. Events such as regional school competitions, youth sporting leagues, and non-profit community-based sports events are just a few examples. Nostalgia sports tourism involves traveling to famous sport-related tourist attractions. Nostalgia sports tourism may celebrate sports of the past or the present. It could include visiting museums or exhibitions, visiting sporting hall of fames, or visiting sporting venues. The nostalgia sports tourist does not need to be actively participating in a sport or to be spectating. They may simply want to learn more or to reminisce. Examples of nostalgia sports tourism could be riding the luge at the Canada Olympic Park, 
doing a tour of the Maracanã football stadium in Rio, or exploring the Barcelona Olympic Park. And active sports tourism is when a person travels to actively participate in their chosen sport, or when they travel for other reasons, but taking part in a sport is an important part of their tourism experience. Active sports tourists can be segregated into three classifications. The amateur sports tourist, the hobbyist sports tourist, and the professional sports tourist. There are a large number of active sports that a tourist may choose to get involved with around the world. A few examples could be going diving in the Galapagos Islands with hammerhead sharks, swimming in the Great Barrier Reef, playing tennis in Morocco or learning archery in Spain, going running in France, cycling in Amsterdam, taking yoga classes in Bali. You could learn Tai Chi in China or kayak in Vietnam, go sailing in Australia or skiing in Argentina. Surfing in Costa Rica is pretty popular, as is playing baseball in Boston. And if you're looking for something a bit more unusual, you could go hand gliding in Rio de Janeiro, fishing in the Gambia, or rock climbing in Thailand. Or how about trying your hand at horse riding in Ecuador, or hiking in Jeju in South Korea. And the last type of sports tourism is passive sports tourism. It's important to recognise that while sport is inherently active, not all those who participate or who are involved with the sport are themselves active. In fact, passive tourists can actually contribute more to the sport than those who are active. A passive sports tourist is a person who is not actively participating. Instead, they are spectators or fans. Passive sports tourism involves tourists watching a sport being played. This could be a major sporting event, or it could simply be supporting a family member or a friend playing sport. Most passive sports tourists are fans, such as football, rugby or cricket supporters. So what are the benefits of sports tourism? Why is it so good? Well, as with any type of tourism, there are a range of benefits and advantages of sports tourism. While the most obvious is perhaps the economic advantage of tourism, i.e. it makes money, there are also positive social impacts as well as environmental impacts. And here are some examples. Sports tourism encourages tourists to visit an area that may not otherwise have tourism. It creates economic growth through tourists who book hotel rooms, they eat in restaurants, etc. Sports tourism helps to create exposure and enhances a positive image for the local community. And many sports tourism infrastructures and facilities can also be used by members of the host community, so it benefits them too. Talking of community, the development of sports tourism can help build a sense of community and it can help to attract potential high yield visitors and repeat visitors. It can provide the opportunity to develop new infrastructure in the area and the media can help to promote the destination too. Sports tourism can improve overall tourist numbers and the money that is made can be reinvested into the local economy. Sports tourism creates jobs for local people and sports tourism, which relies on the natural environment, may result in better environmental management and preservation. But as always, tourism isn't perfect and it does have negative impacts too. Aspects such as environmental degradation, when the environment is damaged or destroyed, when foreign people are employed rather than local people, or when locals feel that their cultural norms are being overlooked, are examples of how sports tourism can have negative impacts rather than positive. So the key really is to have good management and to take a sustainable approach to make sure that we maximise the benefits of sports tourism and minimise the disadvantages or the negative impacts. Are you a sports tourist? What kind of sports tourism do you like? Let me know in the comments and if you have liked this video don't forget to give me a big thumbs up.